Hello and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Ukraine and the Russian Federation have reached a preliminary agreement on the exchange of held prisoners according to the 33 for 33 formula. Whether the list includes Ukrainian film director Oleg Sensolvent, former chief editor of RIA Novosti Ukraine, Kirill Vyshinsky, is still unknown. To discuss this, we welcome to the studio today Ilya Panamarov. He's a former Russian MP. Hello and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So at first we had the information that four Ukrainian political prisoners have been transferred to the Lefortovo pretrial center in Moscow from uh, different Russian penal colonies and the information went out that they were uh, getting ready for being exchanged uh, for uh, Russian political prisoners. But now the uh, Russian RBK um, um, uh, uh, media company states that it's going to be 33 for 33 formula. What's your information on that? Well, as far as I understand, there is uh, still no official uh, information. There is nothing that is carved in stone and officially declared on behalf of either uh, Kremlin or mm -hmm. uh, administration of the president in Ukraine. Mm, uh, so it's a lot of uh, media rumors, and sometimes those rumors, they are targeted specifically to touch the grounds and to actually influence the, uh, the negotiations. What mm -hmm. uh, we know for sure that indeed the negotiations are at the final stage. Uh, twice uh, unofficial uh, uh, Russia's president envoy, uh, Mr. Alexei Venediktov, editor-in-chief of Echo Moscow uh, media station, was in mm -hmm. Kiev, mm -hmm. uh, obviously with uh, the objective to uh, touch ground on those issues as well and, and push the process through. Um, I think that actually the biggest question mark is the fate of uh, Ukrainian sailors which are being kept right. in, are in Russian prison. they being included prison. in the 33 list? You know, uh, I would be actually highly surprised if they will. Mm. Because uh, from the legal uh, standpoint of view, uh, uh, those people who were convicted uh, technically, legally, it's, it's possible to exchange them because they can be pardoned by the president of Russia, and on these legal grounds, they can be exchanged. Mm -hmm. um, in the question of, uh, of sailors, uh, they are still waiting for the trial. They still are the people who were detained for alleged uh, crimes mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, smuggling, I don't know how they actually qual qualify this, because obviously they are military prisoners in, in, in reality, and that was recognized by international court, but right. uh, the Russia treats them as people who were trying to illegally cross the Russian, uh, the Russian border. In mm -hmm. this situation, mm -hmm. there is no legal mechanism how the president of Russia can actually release them. I think that he actually wants very much uh, to push them out of the country because uh, they actually burn his fingers. Right. Because uh, they, they, they are the people who have uh, most of international attention mm -hmm. uh, linked mm -hmm. to them, way higher, unfortunately, than Alexei Sov and, and, and Sushinka and all others. Uh, and uh, that's why I in Putin's uh, mind, they should be actually the first on the list. Mm -hmm. But he is a lawyer. And uh, how would he bypass his own regulations and laws? I, I do not understand. Well, <laughs> nevertheless, it's still possible. Anyway, is there any information on who exactly is taking part in the negotiation process? Um, who's involved in the negotiation process from the Russian side and from the Ukrainian side as well. There are, there are a lot of uh, people uh, which are definitely engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we should state that the ultimate decision on this issue is being made by President Putin and by nobody else. Nobody else. Uh, from uh, Ukrainian side, as, uh, as far as I, as I can understand, there is uh, uh, Mr. Yermak, uh, President's uh, uh, Zelensky old uh, friend and uh, currently his aide uh, in the office of mm -hmm, the president mm -hmm. that uh, he would be in charge in general in negotiations with Russia. Uh, from Russian side, obviously, number one person is Mr. Surkov, but uh, also there is a track uh, which is happening between two ombudsmen, mm -hmm. uh, ombudswomen mm -hmm. to, to be exact. Ombudspersons. Uh, <laughs> ombudspersons, yeah. Uh, then uh, there is another 
uh, track uh, which is happening on behalf of Mr. Medvedchuk, mm -hmm. who obviously mm -hmm. still wants to pump up his political position within yeah. Russia uh, by uh, uh, taking all the glory for liberating uh, uh, the uh, prisoners. But uh, as far as I understand, Mr. Putin actually uh, made the decision that right now it would not go in the hands of uh, Mr. Medvedchuk as, uh, as it was before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he would allow President Zelensky uh, mm -hmm. to receive the benefit because that would be in the interest of future peace uh, negotiations on, on Donbass and everything that is happening right now in the world uh, with uh, hints that Russia may be rejoining uh, G8 or, or things like that. That's all linked that the world that community brings, wants to push Putin. Yes, that brings us to my next question. Mm. Uh, this prisoner swap, this, uh, we could say, a large-scale prisoner swap, because 4 versus 33, there is a big difference. Um, is this a pre-stage for starting peace talks regarding the Donbas conflict zone and possible um, coming back of Crimea? Uh, and join in Crimea coming back to Ukraine uh, or is it uh, happening before the G7 summit and Russia having a desire to rejoin to, to be reinstated in the club because we all know that Donald Trump has supported the idea of Russia joining back the G8 um, organization, whereas the uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron, the French president, are absolutely against it. Well, you know, uh, my position and opinion, I am 100% sure that eventually Crimea would uh, be returned to Ukraine, but unfortunately that would happen only over Putin's dead body. And uh, <laughs> while he's in Kremlin, I don't think that that, that would actually uh, happen. So uh, well, Crimea would not be part of any negotiations that, uh, that would take place in the foreseeable future. While he's in the Kremlin, there would be no negotiations on uh, Crimea issue that would uh, uh, remain occupied. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's either military uh, um, option there, mm -hmm. which I think is, is not so likely, or we need to wait until there would be a new government in Russia. Um, uh, to the, the contrary, the situation in Donbass, I think is actually right now is the best time to actually resolve it and uh, to stop the violence and the bloodshed and uh, stop uh, uh, Russia's occupation of this uh, territory. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, Putin didn't want to take over Donbass. From the very beginning, he was repeating all the time that Donbass is Ukraine. He wants to influence Ukraine using Donbass as his lever. Uh, yeah, right. in, Nobody into, wants into to Ukrainian, yeah, into but, yeah. Ukrainian politics, but but uh, he 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 needs this territory to be pushed back mm -hmm. uh, into Ukraine, and I think that right now the overall feeling of nervousness uh, in Moscow uh, about sanctions and everything is is actually quite high. Yeah. Uh, uh, those sanctions they they are not ruining Russian economy. But they create uh, a lot of uh, obstacles, um, a, a lot of problems for particular uh, members of Russian elite. Uh, yeah. They have problems with traveling. They have problems with their accounts. They have problems with lending. They have problems yeah. with their businesses. So they want Putin to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, all those uh, declarations about G8, uh, restoration of G8, and everything, this is kind of carrots that are being hanged around by members of international elite mm -hmm. uh, so that Putin has an additional incentive to actually do the negotiation and actually achieve certain result. And uh, if Ukraine here would be sophisticated enough in terms of negotiation tactics, I think uh, that certain agreement can be actually achieved. Well, we're all looking forward to the best result that is possible in this Definitely. situation. Thank you so much for coming. That was Ilya Panamarov, he's a former Russian MP. Thank you so much for watching UATV. Stay tuned for the rest. Yeah.